This is GPS, the global public square. Welcome to all of you in the United States and around the world. I'm Fareed Zakaria. So here's what I've been thinking about this week. You know that ever since 9-11, the United States has been trying to engage in a battle of ideas against radical Islam. Now, America can't really get involved in a, in a debate within Islam, so that means finding and supporting moderate Muslims. This is a cultural struggle that has been warmly supported by liberals and conservatives. In fact, many conservatives have argued that we should be engaged in a much more extensive and expensive effort to fund moderates and delegitimize radical and violent Islam. Under both the Bush and Obama administrations, there have been active efforts worldwide to support Muslims who were trying to rescue their religion from extremists, fundamentalists, and jihadis. And this has meant funding mosques, Islamic centers, imams, and community leaders who share a peaceful and pluralistic vision of Islam. Except, it turns out, if they are in our own backyard. The debate over the proposed community center to be built a few blocks away from the World Trade Center has missed this fundamentally important point. If this community center were being built anywhere else in the world, chances are the U.S. government would be funding it. The man behind it, Imam Faisal Abdul Rauf, has spent years trying to offer a liberal interpretation of Islam. His most recent book, What's Right with Islam is What's Right with America, argues that America is actually what an ideal Islamic society would look like because it is peaceful, tolerant, and pluralistic. His vision for Islam, in other words, is Osama bin Laden's nightmare. We should be encouraging such an Islamic center, not demonizing it. Now, there is, of course, the much more fundamental issue, freedom of religion in America, which is a founding principle of this country. The most eloquent and intelligent defense of that principle came last week from New York's Mayor Michael Bloomberg in an address that should be required reading in every civics class in America. There have, on the other hand, been politicians who have shamelessly and shamefully capitalized on the public's wariness. The public is wary understandably because there has been so much disinformation about this center. But perhaps the most puzzling stand was taken by the Anti-Defamation League, which was founded to support the freedom of religion. The director of the ADL, Abraham Foxman, explained that the victims of 9-11 had feelings on this matter that should be respected even if they were irrational. First of all, there were many dozens of victims of 9-11 who were Muslim. Do their feelings count? More important, are irrational feelings, prejudices, hatreds, okay because those expressing them are victims or see themselves as victims? Will the ADL defend the rights of Palestinian victims to be anti-Semites? I have to say I was personally deeply saddened by the ADL stand because five years ago, the organization honored me with its Hubert Humphrey Award for First Amendment Freedoms. Given the position that they have taken on a core issue of religious freedom in America, I cannot in good conscience keep that award. So this week, I am going to return to the ADL, the handsome medal, and the generous honorarium that came with it. I hope this might spur them to see that they have made a mistake and to return to their historic, robust defense of freedom of religion in America, something they have subscribed to for decades and which I honor them for.